I will restore to you the years, not just the things. You can have the restoration of relationships. You can have the resurrection of things. But let me tell you, real dominion is dominion over time. Because the unit of destiny is measured in time. When you meet a dying man, he will not ask you for more things. When you meet a dying man, his greatest request is time. Because if you can give him time, every other thing can be found in time. Are we together now? When you lose relationships under a certain condition, you can easily have another relationship. When you lose things, people have lost monies, people have lost properties, and with time, they got it back. But when you lose time, there is no factor that guarantees the restoration of time again. Are we together now? Yes, because it is not given unto men to live in the past physically. But God is saying, in my dealings with men, I can restore people, I can restore things, and I can restore time. This is very important. I examined the subject of losses. Um, it is a word that people do not want to hear. The moment I mention a loss or losses, either to a businessman or someone who just lost a loved one, it's not a word that anyone wants to be associated with at all. Is that true? When you hear the word profit, you hear the word gain. Now, these are words that we like. Nobody wants to hear the word loss or losses. And by the Spirit of God, very quickly, I just want to exhort us. I'm not really doing an extensive exegesis of God's word, just a charge, really, so that we can pray. A few reasons why individuals lose in life. Please pay attention. Tonight's message can be a lifeline for someone based on that which God showed me. There are a number of reasons. And in as much as every new year, every new season, we aspire for the best of God in our lives and our destinies, if we do not know what makes for a life of defeat and retrogression, we will continue repeating the same mistakes. And you have every new year look like the former year in spite of the prophetic words. And so God is giving us a chance by his word to be able to ascend through knowledge to a higher realm where our results become predictable you can know that you are done with losses and retrogression are we together now our confidence in this kingdom is based on the integrity of god's word there are two qualities of god that the believer builds his confidence upon number one is his integrity Number two is his ability. These are the pillars of the believer's confidence. So when people ask you, based on what do you think God will not fail you? It is based on his integrity. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a man. You may have heard it in my teachings that God only became a man. But he is not a man. Are we together? Yes. The Bible tells us that men lie. They don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. So it says God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man. That is the basis of your confidence. It means God only says what he can do. So if you hear God say anything, he has vetted his ability to find out that 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 what he has said it is within his power to make it come to pass are we together now this is very powerful so his integrity and his ability let's examine a few reasons why people experience losses of all kinds in their lives are you learning already number one lack of discernment 
Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's study a few scriptures as fast as we can. Hebrews 2 and verse 1. Lack of discernment. It says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Say discernment. Discernment is very important. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. These are scriptures that show us the danger of not having discernment. Isaiah 1, 3. It says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people doth not consider. That means these people have not built themselves to be able to discern. We lose in life because we do not know how to discern the faculty of spiritual perception, the ability to know what God is doing. In these days, if you lack discernment, you will lose a lot of things. It can cost you even your bishopric. He said his bishopric, let another take. Are we blessed? Ezekiel chapter 12. Let's look at one or two more scriptures. Ezekiel chapter 12. We'll start from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. The word of the Lord also came to me saying, please let's read verse 2 together. Ready? One, two, read. Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious people. It says, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not for they are that is his definition of lack of discernment that you have eyes and yet you do not see you have ears and you do not hear people lose because they do not have the ability to see and to hear very very powerful acts 28 and verse 27 let that be the last verse for this and then we'll jump to the next Acts 28 and verse 27. He said that for the heart of these people is wax gross. For their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes. Hear with their ears. Understand with their heart. And should be converted and I should heal them. There is a relationship between discernment and restoration. There is a relationship between lack of discernment and losses. Many people, many believers have not trained their faculty of spiritual perception to discern. Discern people, discern opportunities, discern seasons. He says, and of the sons of Issachar, men who had the understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do. And because of that, their brethren were at their command. Number two, why do people lose in this kingdom? Carelessness. Number two, carelessness. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, where we read. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. Just pay attention to these scriptures and let them speak to your spirit. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape, it says... If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him, how shall we escape when there is neglect, carelessness? Many believers have demonstrated carelessness across every area of their lives. Carelessness with opportunities, carelessness with moments, carelessness with prophetic words. Are we together now? Yes. yes. Judges chapter 11. Let's read from verse 30. We're discussing the reasons why people lose in this kingdom. As an attempt to understand the value of restoration. And we said number one is lack of discernment. The absence of it. Number two, carelessness. Are we there? Judges 11 from verse 30. Remember the story of Jephthah? Pay attention. It says, Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. You will see the consequence of carelessness right now. Carelessness with words. Carelessness with commitments. It says, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands. We are reading to 35. 
then it shall be that whatsoever comfort out of the door to meet me when i return in peace from the children of ammon shall surely be the lord and i will offer it for for a bond offering say carelessness this is a man who is speaking carelessly this this is clearly emotions that lord if you give me victory anything that comes out of my house i will give you as a bond offering follow closely so jephthah passed over to the children of ammon to fight against them and the lord delivered them into his hands are we still here and he smote them even until all of those places and thus the children of ammon were subdued before the children of israel 34. it says and jephthah came to mispah unto his house and behold who came out his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances and she was his only child say carelessness we lose things in life because we do not allow the holy spirit to lead us people make careless statements careless commitments and many of us the reason why we've not been able to experience advancement and even restoration is because we make careless commitments carelessness beside her he had neither son nor daughter 35 and it came to pass when he saw her he rent his clothes and said alas my daughter thou hast brought me very low and thou art one of them that trouble me for i have opened my mouth unto the lord and i cannot go back there are people who made commitments that were beyond their financial level emotionally they just met a family of 10 people and said i would take care of all of you to university and the wife said but how what is the financial state of the family said and they clapped for you when you spoke it and they captured it on tv carelessness hasty in speech carelessness especially with words there are people who have said things that they wish they did not say because careless utterances have cost people years damage control for years is someone learning now the reason why we lose in this kingdom carelessness carelessness hmm. in matthew chapter 14 when you read from verse 6 to 11 i don't know if we can look at it is, is a parable the parable of the talent remember he gave on to one five he gave on to one two he gave on to matthew 14 let's look at it from verse 6 sorry uh, that was the story of herodias Keep it. Let's just read it since you've, you've put it up. The Bible says, when Herodias' birthday was kept, the, when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them. And please who? Are you ready to see carelessness again? Please read verse 7. One to read. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her... You see how careless people are? How in the world do you stand as a king who is responsible for the destinies of many and simply because a lady danced before you and you were happy and you made a careless statement that anything, that means if she said, get up from that throne. Are we together now? Verse 8. And she, being therefore instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. You, you see it now. That every time people do careless things and say careless things, eventually. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Because we are not thoughtful, we are not guided by the word, we are not guided by the spirit. You see, there are three faculties. Let me teach you this very quickly. I wish I had time. There are three faculties for, by which we interact with this realm and we make decisions. I will start from the third. The third is emotions. It is the weakest of all because it vacillates. Number two 
is reason based on logic and principles it is stronger than emotions the highest number one is discernment you see so we have emotions we have reason that is based on principles emotions are based on feelings they vacillate and they change reasoning is based on principles and so there is a measure of stability but the highest is discernment because it is based on the voice of god it is based on the word of god are we together now that means i can look at your life and know which of these faculties you have exalted if i see the vacillations around your decisions i know that you have exalted emotions above reason and above discernment if i see that you are excessively philosophical with no honor to the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i know you have exalted reason above emotion and above discernment in this order it is discernment then reason then emotions when the devil wants to destroy people he manipulates them because he's the master of the sense realm to exalt their emotions the moment you get to the realm of emotions you are in satan's domain he will play miserably with you can i tell you this both frustration and excitement can lead to emotions so whether you are responding from a state of excitement or a state of frustration if you are not careful and you're not guided you can be careless this man was excited and he said young girl whatever it is that you want i will give it to you and she met her mom and said mom look at this offer and the mom said finally i have a chance to kill a prophet and they killed him in a miserable way as though the spirit of god was never upon him that's the implication of carelessness are we learning yeah. number three very quickly why do we lose in this kingdom ignorance of the laws of the kingdom ignorance ignorance of the laws of the kingdom in psalm 82 and verse 5 popular scripture it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course they know not they know not this is a kingdom that thrives by knowledge proverbs 19 and verse 2 proverbs 19 and verse 2 the bible says through knowledge shall the just be delivered proverbs 19 and verse 2 are we there it says also that the soul okay that the soul be without knowledge it is not good i was quoting another scripture it says and he that hasted with his feet seen it so it is not good to be without knowledge lay your hands on your head in one minute and declare that this year 2022 this is the year you will contend for superior spiritual knowledge go ahead and pray in one minute make a commitment by god make a commitment by his grace ignorance of the ways of god i'm tired of shadow boxing living my life by guesswork hoping i am right you can step into a level of predictability and excellence in your spiritual life through knowledge it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered in the name of jesus christ hallelujah number four why do we lose in this kingdom don't forget what we're dealing with we're examining why believers lose number one i said is lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the ways of god ignorance of the laws of the kingdom people lose financially because they do not understand the kingdom truths allocated for their excellence on that wise people lose to principalities and powers and demons and live defeated lives because they do not understand the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer just knowing that victory has been purchased for us in christ does not administer victory to you the administration of victory is by light are we together now yes so just being aware does not bless you the bible says in 
um, Ephesians 4 and verse 18, it says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated through from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Are we together? The Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child. A child means one who is void of knowledge. It says he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. Number four, why do we lose in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. Write it down, please. Abuse and misuse. A major reason why believers lose. Abuse and and misuse just write for reference we may not have the time to go through it matthew chapter 25 when you read from verse 14 to 30 matthew 25 14 to 30 we abuse and we misuse time this was the story of the um uh what they call it now the five the the the, the three uh people who, who were given talents parable of the talents one five one two and the other one and you can see how careful and intentional the first two were the last person was careless he went and buried his talent you bury seeds not talents you see that and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow so i thought that instead of wasting your talent i do you a favor by burying it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use abnormal use people abuse opportunities they abuse access they abuse moments and they lose many people have abused access to great people access to great minds we continue to lose because of abuse abuse of privileges remember in second samuel just write it for reference again second samuel chapter 2 well let's read from 12 to 17 but the entire text is from chapter 12 of first samuel first samuel chapter 12 down to chapter first samuel chapter 2 down to first samuel chapter 4 this was the story of the sons of eli but let's just look at chapter 2 first samuel 2 from verse 12 to 17 the bible talks about the sons of eli remember hophni and phinehas the bible says the sons of eli were sons of belial they knew not the lord read to 17 it says and the priest custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifices the priest servants came while the flesh was in sitting with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand uh -huh. and they struck into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself it was a privilege of priesthood and this principle still works till today in the body of Christ. Are you seeing that now? There are privileges that priesthood brings, but there can be the abuse of it. To cut the story, the long story short, it was that when the meat or whatever the sacrifice was boiling, you are given the privilege to put that fork and whatever you bring out, it is your own blessing from the Lord. But the Hophni and Fini has said, uh -uh, before you boil it, let us clearly look at it and pick you see that they kept taking advantage of the fact that their father was a priest you will see their end remember the story Ichabod? when the ark of god was taken they were also captured and killed they brought eli a report and said listen your sons are dead that was not even what disturbed him they said the ark of the lord has been captured he fell down broke his neck and that was the end of it abuse 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 and misuse we many of us have misused privileges we have misused opportunities have you heard people say i'm connected to so many people and none of them can help me 
find out why none of them can help you even though you are close to them you abuse access to their numbers you call them every time and say you are not answering me have you forgotten we're relatives abuse and and you know sadly speaking africa we are masters of abuse we abuse opportunities we abuse moments you have acts there, there is an entitlement mentality are we together now we just believe that someone somewhere owes us to succeed and come and bring a, a an honorarium from that success abuse and misuse number five why do people lose the final reason i'll give you is tests and trials it is true that when we go through seasons of tests and trials like the bible shows it is possible that we lose things in james chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3 james chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3 here's what the bible says brethren so he's talking to brethren he's not talking to they who are outside of faith count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations he says knowing this your confidence should be based on this knowledge that the trying of your faith worketh patience the trying of your faith worketh patience are we together now it is true that when people are going through seasons of prunings and trainings it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true that people momentarily can lose things are we together we read all through scripture that people were constrained when david was in the cave of adulam running away he lost several things opportunities even though he had people there with him when joseph on account of his 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 diligence and his his honor to god and to the integrity of his person he found himself in the prison he lost the opportunity to be the head even though he was a slave there were privileges that were withdrawn from him so there are times that we go through seasons that on account of the dealings of god in our lives on account of several things it is possible that we can lose some of these things maybe you are a person of integrity in the office and on account of your integrity is possible that momentarily you can lose a few things privileges opportunities these are the five reasons i have examined from scripture and from experience why people lose let me do a one minute recap lack of discernment carelessness ignorance of the laws of the kingdom abuse and misuse then tests and trials but i have good news for you that in the name of jesus it does not matter by which means by the power that raised christ from the dead there must be restoration in your life in the name of jesus christ now please pay attention let me give you by the spirit about four keys that are responsible for restoration are you ready number one the first key that is truly responsible for restoration if you want god to restore moments time or whatever it is in your life the first key is self-examination the power of self-examination second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 it says to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith prove your own selves examine yourself can i tell you this when people are downcast they do not take the personal responsibility of saying listen why am i here this is not self-condemnation you have to learn to sit with yourself why are things not working for this family why is it that i have been in lagos for 10 years and i've only celebrated the testimony of others there is something about the responsibility of thoughtfulness 
that most believers do not submit themselves to you have to sit down and ask yourself honest questions the bible says examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith luke chapter 15 from verse 17 i'll just cut it and start from verse 17 this is a very classic story that that demonstrates responsibility and the power of self-examination this is the story of the prodigal son the bible says when he came to he never said the holy ghost spoke to him uh -uh. you it is within your power to come to yourself sometimes you see pain is a gift because it can bring you to a point where you come to yourself it is true when things happen too cheap when you keep reaping harvest for seeds you did not sow there are many of us who have been shielded by the love of others and it has never given us an opportunity to examine ourselves whether you sow or not someone's harvest he will share it with you and chances are excellent that you can think that because you are receiving a harvest outsourced from another you don't see the value of seed time you don't see the value of anything because someone else is shielding you the power of self-examination you must learn this have a time where you stay alone with god lock yourself go somewhere and say lord i i am not happy at the way my life is going proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says it says through desire a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom once you separate yourself you have separated yourself from foolishness too the moment you take the pain of separating yourself it is wisdom you will encounter are we together yes why is my business not working why is my spiritual life not working i've been born again for 10 years but i barely know anything about the principles of scripture why is it that i'm not attentive in church you have to examine yourself and ask yourself very honest questions the power of self-examination number two what is the second key that makes for restoration brokenness psalm 51 and verse 17 brokenness do you know what brokenness is brokenness is a state of recognition recognizing your inadequacy your inability to help yourself unassisted that if god does not come into this equation of my life to help me my best will still be limited brokenness many people want god to restore them restore their dignity and their honor but that sense of self-righteousness and pride is still alive there in the story of the prodigal son listen the father did not come to meet the rebellious arrogant son the father came to meet a son that was already repentant and was ready to be restored are we together brokenness is very powerful you walked out on your ceo and you lost your job you are secretly hoping you will get back to the job but you do not have the humility to be broken to admit that i was wrong and somehow you are hoping it does not work that way brokenness is not um brokenness is not something you assume it is a state that everyone around you will know this person is broken there are many people today if they were broken enough they would have re relationships restored together with the privileges if that boy sat down there the prodigal son i presume if he stayed one more year in that foolishness he would have died because he was already close to death he said how many hired servants does my father have and i'm here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father and when i meet him i will say father i have sinned i won't say father it was just my mind my mind was playing some emotional games call it what it is i have sinned against you i have sinned against heaven the character of brokenness is that it admits without shame are we together pastor i am sorry i offended you this is not the way it should be it was carelessness i take full responsibility that's brokenness the 
The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou will not despise. Many, many, many people are unable to experience restoration in their lives because they are not genuinely broken. Genuinely broken. There are many children who would get back the support of their parents, their sponsors, their loved ones, if only they communicate brokenness in truth and in sincerity. Is that true? Brokenness. Number three. What's the third key that makes for restoration? Knowledge. 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 Proverbs 11, I, I believe verse 9 says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine. For your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Not knowledge of your situation or knowledge of what you want. Knowledge of what it takes. Listen, most people know what they want. They even know what they don't want. But they do not have the knowledge of what it takes. Is that true? So, this is what I want. I desire this so desperately. And this is it here. The Bible says that this should be given to me. But you must know, have the requisite level of spiritual illumination that takes you from prophecy to experience. Otherwise, you will keep wishing things that will never, never manifest in your life. It takes more than knowing what God has said. It takes more than knowing what God has told you to have it. Is that true? You must find out the, the participatory condition he has connected to that promise. Your acting in keeping with the condition is your demonstration of faith. That faith is not just believing alone. Believing is part of the process of faith. Faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as a sign that you believe God. I don't know if I've demonstrated it here, but say for instance, I call this gentleman and I say, come and pick this. You see, don't come, but just say you are coming. Say you are coming. Look at this. Shout it again. Say I'm coming. 2018 say you are coming 2019 say you are coming 2020 the promise is still there waiting you have not manifested faith you've just been wishing that you will have it and someone will come in 2022 my brother walk and come and collect it and you are wondering where did you come from uh -uh. it is the person who took the action of faith Lord, I'm going to build a house. You've never found out where there's an empty land. You are waiting for your bank account. It does not cost money to go and know where land is. And say, Lord, I have seen the land. And someone who came from nowhere, now the person is roofing his house and you're wondering. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what it takes as prescribed by scripture to make what God has said be manifest in your life. Are we together? Thank you. Knowledge. We need high level spiritual illumination. Let me challenge you. I want you to go back home and write a list of all the areas in your life where you have not seen the word of God produce the kind of result that you desire. Knowing that God is glorified in your results. Remember what the Bible says. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see. God wants men to see. Because in seeing the result that proceeds from you, they will glorify God. Herein is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear much fruit, not little fruit, sustainable predictable results brings glory to the name of the lord are we together galatians 1 25 it says and they glorified god 
in me. They glorified God in me. The excellency of the workings of the word in and through your life. It compels all and sundry to know that Jesus Christ is lifted and glorified in and through your life. God is counting on everyone here as a membership. Counting on individuals that through your life, your life will become a living epistle. Someone will look at your life this year and anything he did not understand in the morning, he will look at your life for the explanation. If he, if he read his Bible in the morning and he saw that God was faith, that God is faithful and he did not get that Bible study, God will tell him, look at this pastor as an explanation, a clarification to what you have learned. That's what it means to be a living epistle your life explains what people do not understand about god when god says that he can favor men if they say lord i i, I is it real that you can favor men he personifies his word embodies it in an individual so that you become a, a demonstration of it Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. There are certain results that are not within the realm of men. When you see men manifest that result, it, it, it was outsourced from a dimension that is higher than this human dimension. And I'm praying for someone here. The frequency of results that you will begin to walk in. You will be the first person surprised by your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Do not allow anybody downplay the place of results. Your Christian experience will remain a frustrated experience. If you do not have genuine notable results gentiles will not come to you they will come to your light their kings will not come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising preachers here whether in this ministry or those who came this is the year to contend for high levels of spiritual power high levels of wisdom the kind of wisdom that is connected to mighty works business people this is the year to operate at a dimension that your contemporaries will come to you and say we have discerned that god is with you believe what i'm saying results are powerful results can evangelize they, there are there are there are certain messages that only results can preach the bible said the greek seek for a sign the world is tired of vain explanations from christians one genuine result in the name of the lord can bring to end decades of confusion knowledge we rise in this kingdom by knowledge there is what you must know there is what you must know to reign and to excel there is what you must know to remain on fire there is what you must know to access the spirit of wisdom there is what you must know about kingdom influence there is what you must know about longevity there is what you must know about wealth and abundance there is what you must know about dominion over systems and structures there is what you must know about relationships the question is which aspect of your life are you short go back and become a spiritual archaeologist he said for everyone that seek it find it jesus gave a parable we're praying now he gave a parable and he said the kingdom is likened to an individual who lost a coin in a room the coin means a treasure the power to make purchases was missing in the room he knew that he, that coin is somewhere the first thing he did was he brought light the second thing he did was to carry a broom and started sweeping i know this breakthrough is somewhere in scripture i don't know what verse 
I don't know what principle, but I know in scripture God lifts. I know in scripture God restores. I've not understood the dynamics you are sweeping, sweeping with messages, sweeping with prophetic words. And the Bible says she found it and she rejoiced. Can I tell you this? Every time you claim you have found something and it does not show in your life, you are yet to find it. I found your word and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Listen, light is powerful. Light is powerful. When you find this thing, you have found it. Believe me, listen, you can gain mastery in the spirit. You truly can gain mastery in the spirit. He said, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Move past the realm of trial and error, shadow boxing and hoping that one thing or the other will work. You can rise to a level of predictability in your Christian experience. That you wake up in the morning and you know you will be favored today. You know. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. Knowledge. Knowledge. You must submit yourself through the labor dimension of faith to access knowledge. No matter how great a door is, there is a small key that opens it. And you can put that key in your pocket. But if that key is missing, you can stand before that door from morning till night. But then if you find the key, that is knowledge. You need understanding. Because there are times that you can have the key. And the dynamics of opening that door. Some doors you turn once. Some doors you turn twice. For others you turn and do some other things. The Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding knowledge tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it knowledge says give but understanding tells you how to give in a way that prospers you knowledge tells you pray understanding tells you how to pray to get results knowledge says fast understanding tells you the kind of fast that has been commanded It's good to have knowledge, but in addition to knowledge, have understanding. Understanding brings stability to your life. My time is up. Number four. The last and then we'll pray. Be sensitive now. I want to pray for you. The fourth key that activates restoration is the prophetic. Hmm. <laughs> someone's life is changing Isaiah 42 and verse 22 Isaiah 42 and verse 22 never forget this scripture but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and non-deliver it. Read with me. They are for a spoil and none say it. Restore. Restoration does not just happen. Someone must say it. None say it. Restore. None say it. Restore. In 2 Kings chapter 6, when you read the first seven verses very quickly, 2 Kings chapter 6 this was a very interesting rendition the bible says the sons of the prophet said unto elisha behold now the place where we meet with you is too small so they, it was a desire to advance next verse it says let us go we pray thee unto jordan and take thee every man a beam and let us make a place where we may dwell and he answered and said go ye verse 3 and one said be content i pray thee go with thy servants and he answered and he said i will go verse 4 so he went with them and they came to jordan and cut down wood 
but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed wise man many people would try to jump inside the river and die there no there are certain results that you cannot just get it by yourself god has positioned people within the body that in addition and in connection to your faith this man cried and said alas master i'm in trouble i borrowed this the prophet said where fell it and he answered he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it thither and the iron did swim the iron did swim the finances that left you did come back because you see everything that left you is still on earth under a certain condition it can come back this is true please listen to me when the prophetic is administered outside the boundary of scripture it just becomes a display of ignorance with no potency and power but when the prophetic is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture it works wonders listen to me my beloved people there is a dimension of growth and restoration and excellence that only the prophetic can bring to your life when you lose money it's not another business that will bring the money back no you will only waste your time and keep digging deeper it is the prophetic that will bring it back it may look like a physical structure brought it back but it is the prophetic the economy of a whole land had gone down and a prophet said by this time tomorrow he gave it the timing and by the morrow there was restoration I saw this vision and I knew that the Lord wanted me to teach and charge and prophesy restoration listen to me God can restore men God can restore things and God can restore time do you know how God restores time he does not take you backward he takes what was in your yesterday that should have happened that did not happen he brings it into your tomorrow are you getting the point now you have to understand how God restores because God does not exist in time he does not even exist in eternity because eternity is time it's just time without end infinite summations uh, no summations of infinite dispensations God dwells in a realm that is neither eternity nor time so there is nothing like past present and future with God that reality is only given to men to help us relate with God there is no such thing as a future there is no such thing as past God's realm is now that's it so your yesterday is as clear and real to God as your tomorrow there is no difference are we together so he can move something that should have happened in year 2000 2015 maybe at that time when that prophetic word would have come you were not sensitive God can move it into January and February and make it happen in your life this is restoration in one minute wherever you are I want you to pray very passionately and cry based on this word ask the Lord to bring restoration don't waste this moment go ahead and pray all the centers that are following overflows those following online here is your chance to contact the grace that makes for restoration lift your voice and pray and I will restore Shabrate keska di balako sidiash, krante barakatos kadi breti gelahasia. Someone pray.
Kata pratege de la kuskati brende la hasieta. Shabres kati la suda balakusia. Let there be restoration. Pray. God can restore people. Relationships. God can restore things. And God can restore years. Someone is praying. Lord, I've wasted 10, 15 years of my life. I wasted it not being a believer. But now in Christ. I am aware that it is within your power to restore. I call for that restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. It was the Lord that brought them, but the instrument was the prophetic. It says, and by a prophet, they were preserved. Let me read this one scripture. And then I'll just take two or three minutes to just minister and speak over your life. And we'll end with an altar call. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11. Please do not forget this scripture. Nehemiah chapter 5 from verse 11 restore i pray you to them even this day their lands their vineyards their olive yards their houses also a hundred part of the money and of the corn and wine and oil that ye exact of them listen to that scripture someone is making a decree He said, restore everything. Their lands, vineyards, olive yards, houses, hundred part of the money, the corn, the wine, the oil. Verse 12. Then said they, we will obey. We will restore them and will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. Then, I called the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to his promise. It was the priest that came to seal it. A command has come restore, but there must be the priest that says sign. You must make this happen. Restore. Restore my joy. Restore victory. Restore everything. Listen. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden. The Lord had done great things for them. It says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. I sense in my spirit that there are people here. I tell you, I sense such a strong anointing. We just have about two or three minutes. We're not taking too much time. But I want you to believe in the power of God. The power of God is His currency for purchasing realities for believers. That as a result of this encounter, many of you will return with tearsome testimonies. And will say, I've not seen it in this fashion before. Hallelujah. There are three categories of people I want to pray with very quickly. Very, very quickly. And then I just speak over our lives. Number one. I want to impart the grace for speed listen truly believe me when I tell you there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace
for speed that when that grace comes upon an individual you know because you will have dominion over time dominion over time many of us are, are limited by time dominion over time i want to pray for you i sense such a strong anointing i'm seeing the number 24 even though i'm going to pray for everyone we, we have just my time is up so we we'll not have we still have a session hopefully tomorrow either here or any of the centers but i want you to be very very sensitive i want to pray now there are people you are moving but your life is too slow you don't have all the time for that level of slow movement i want to pray there are people who will start running by the anointing please i want you to help them if you can bring them out here let's have them i stretch my hands to the god of heaven no 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 you don't have to come out your cup the anointing will bring you out in the name of jesus right now by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i decree and declare bring them out speed take that grace take that grace in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i decree and declare over families over businesses speed 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 hicc lucky hear the word of the lord i decree and declare over you speed in the name of jesus speed in business speed in your spiritual adventure my goodness may that hand of god rest upon you in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus bring them out if you can just one minute and we're done Parandes every delay that has kept you bound so that you want to move forward and you're unable to move forward in the name of jesus christ i come by the privilege of the election of grace and i declare those chains let you go now let you go now let you go now speed speed every closed door that will not let you move forward i speak to that door a father be open a father be open doors of opportunities in the name of jesus doors of grace doors of new seasons doors of discernment doors of the prophetic doors of the apostolic in the name of jesus christ 